What's up guys, Headphone Wheel here, back with a, another novel review, and this in this case, a uh, literal meaning of novel rather than a novel take on an item, and in this case is going to be for the novel Star Wars The High Republic Light of the Jedi. So I had a chance to finish reading the novel, and overall, while a lot of the characters are new, um, and even the villains are all new as far as I can tell, um, overall, the novel presented a couple of good in, or interesting tie-ins to the Star Wars universe as at large, even without having to deal with um, the Skywalkers, um, Palpatine, or anything like that. So with that, I will jump right into it. I'm not going to uh, reveal in too much of the plot in case you guys, or in case it, um, you as a listener have not read the novel or listened to the um ebook or anything like that but i am going to talk about um kind of the general plot of it but that's about it and then some of the key points that i found interesting so um the novel takes place during the high republic era basically during the time of the old republic about 200 years prior to the events of the phantom menace um so basically for the most part we don't have too many of the characters we would expect but for one which is mentioned in passing so one of the cool things or one of the interesting things that i liked was that they did mention um talk about how the force is a beautiful light a voice um um of beauty and kind of the whole relationship with the living force um how it's um a beautiful thing to look at and that is tied in directly with Yoda. So around this time, he would have been around 700 years old. Um, I think there was a passage in there as well about how he could not attend a, a meeting of the Jedi Council. So one of his um, representatives was there. So they, the novel kind of presents a situation where Jedi Masters can have representatives in their place to speak for them. And they kind of also bring up the idea that... Um, while Yoda was a part of the Jedi Council, he was not necessarily there always in person. So, um, I like that and I kind of hope that, um, future novels elaborate some more on the day-to-day, -day, um, ideas of, or the day-to-day -day proceedings of what Jedi Masters are up to. Uh, we kind of get that in passing if you read between the lines during, um, the prequel eras like during attack of the clones and revenge of the sith where not all council members are available or if there's diminished ranks the jedi council meeting is um a presiding or is presided over with whatever or whichever jedi masters are available so a uh, pretty interesting thing there um the other thing was the idea of the force being a well of power that could never be used up so it has no beginning it has no end there's just the force so this kind of so while this is kind of related to the infinite force in the galaxy kind of related is also related to the idea that um a jedi's power and using the force doesn't diminish it's only your connection to the force that gives you the strength of the power so there was no real, so it's kind of related to that interaction between Obi Wan and Anakin, where um, Anakin would would tell Padme that Obi Wan would be grumpy with him for using the Force to cut a pear. So why it, the passage in the novel was kind of along those lines of why save it for special occasions? You should because you have a connection to the Force, you should use it. So it's kind of more along the lines of a lesson of don't use it frivolously but if you're in a situation to use it you should use it um other than that that's about it for that um the other interesting tie-in with this novel was related to um the force awakens in which case we have the height of power for the family of the santeca so in the force awakens we have the character of lore santeca who um, gives Poe the um, thumb drive with the 
hyperspace lanes or the passage the map passage to get to Luke Skywalker and is tied into the High Republic in that the Santecas are a well-known family for navigating hyperspace routes and lanes and getting new passages and otherwise having the technology and being experts on navigating hyperspace lanes. So um, I kind of liked that tie-in that um, the reason that um, Lord Santeca in The Force Awakens was able to find that piece of the puzzle was because his family was steeped in hyperspace lanes and trading and um, otherwise navigating the galaxy. Um, and then otherwise we have a tie, or next up we have a tie-in to the Star Wars video games and also a bit to A New Hope when we have a discussion in Light of the Jedi as far as um, Mind Trick or Mind Touch, so the actual name of it. Um, it's in the novels established as a tool of the light side, but um, the naming of it is kind of different. So, or what the official name of it is not necessarily mind trick or mind touch. Um, it's kind of used as a problem solving technique in order to get yourself out of a situation or to navigate a, a conversation in a way that one desires so um in either case you're touching the mind of the user so it depends on what i guess it depends on the intent of what you're using it for so um an interesting discussion there so i mean i guess like in the case of obi-wan using it in a new hope it's a mind trick because he's trying to get out of a situation but if you're trying to guide a conversation or get a conversation to go in a particular direction um, or just read a particular way of thinking then it's going to be mind touch so kind of a nitpicky way of um, describing a force power but a pretty interesting um, discussion at that so finally the one th um, connection that I wanted to make was to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic where they talk about um, some reinforced gloves and armored plates that one of the characters is wearing, and they talks about acceleration compensators. So um, recently, I've been replaying Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. So you can use various mods and add-ons to upgrade your character's various um, abilities and points, and so you can have you know a, you can have power gauntlets, strength gauntlets, um, strength capacitors. Uh, um, uh, belts to do various things like for in, um, invisibility and things like that so I found that it was a pr particularly good touch to have kind of some more of the technology that we see in the video games introduced in the novels of what various characters can use so rather than for example just having a bounty hunter and his various skills um, talking about a little bit of the um, upgrades and add-ons that they have to give them that edge over their competition. So in this case, we have um, gloves reinforced with armor plates and acceleration compensators for speed, I guess, and then um, strength to get through a Durasteel wall. So overall, uh, per it was a brief passage, but overall I liked that. So um, I want to say as far as the novel goes on the whole, that it expands some of the universe in subtle ways um, rather than just providing overarching um, storylines. So, you, for example, aside from things like that, you have the planet Iridu where, um, for example, Tarkin was at in order, or where Tarkin um, rose to power as far as resolving disputes and otherwise getting... Um, a shipping lane set up for the Empire and um, hyperspace lanes via the um, Santeca family. So just little things like that make the novel interesting to read to kind of find out more about what's going on. So um, I definitely recommend reading the novel and I want to see how they proceed with the next um, novel, which I think is coming out in June, but still it's definitely worth a read. Um, the other thing that was a kind of a note and it, that's kind of interesting to me was um, the or were the villains that were a group of mercenaries and um, bounty hunters, I guess, and they are called the Nihil. So that again tying it to um, 
Knights of the Old Republic 2 is that the one of the Sith Lords in Knights of the Old Republic 2 is that there's a, a Sith Lord called Nihilus. Um, and in the High Republic, they're called the Nihil. So I was wondering, or I got to thinking if um, they're related or if they're followers of Nihilus. Um, and I'm not quite sure, but it's possible that they are related in some form. Um, it depends on if, quote, Knights of the Republic 2 is still canon, but, um, something to read into to see if they're connected, but it's kind of a stretch because we don't really have too much, or as far as I know, Darth Nihil Nihilus from Knights of the Old Republic 2 is a Sith Lord of pure force, energy, and power, and only can keep his form because he wears the cloak and mask, and those... Um, the Nihil in the High Republic are kind of a loose ragtag group of mercenaries and killers, although they use a power called the Eye, so it's possible that they have a force entity or being or some sort of holocron that allows them to um, use the force and ultimately do what they do did in the at the end of the novel. So I'm kind of curious to see if that progresses any further going forward. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, or any other um, anything you want to um, reference for this review, you can always find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for subscription links, supporting the show, um, getting past episodes, and all of that good stuff. Um, but that is all for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.